guys, um, welcome to another cooking session with TASK. As you know, TASK is Travel Advisors Selling the Caribbean, a group formed by Kelly Fontenelle, who is an ever so, what word can I use to describe Kelly? So enthusiastic about Caribbean travel and Caribbean tourism. And so Kelly dedicated herself in ensuring that uh, during this pandemic, all travel advisors who sell the Caribbean, no matter where they are in the world, that they would be updated on all the protocols, which islands are open, which islands are closed. And um, she's been doing a really good job. And further to that, she's organized 12 days of Caribbean cooking. And I am extremely happy to say that um, I am now day number three. So woohoo! And I'm also welcoming December, the time of Christmas. And today I have two beautiful ladies with me. So two female chefs. And I actually decided, since I'm parenting kids, I decided to grace Stephanie's kitchen, which is called the Culinary Studio. So Stephanie, today I'll give a little bit of an intro, but Stephanie is going to be doing our black cake. And as you know, Caribbean, everybody does a really good black cake for Christmas. If you don't have fruit cake at Christmas time, you are not doing a true Caribbean Christmas. And over in Georgetown, Guyana, we have Samara Murphy. And Samara today is going to be doing pork chop wine with rum. And Samara is originally from St. Vincent, but she lives in Guyana. And so she's going to be spicing things up uh, with a bit of rum from both St. Vincent as well as from Guyana. So I will allow the ladies to introduce themselves before I actually do the whole bio and then uh, we'll come back to getting this party started. I know persons are just rolling in. We have over 100 persons who've registered um, today. I think last count was at 143. Uh, so I'm giving persons a few more minutes to actually come in. So Samara, I'm going to start with you and tell us a little about yourself and for sure tell us about the, the dish that you're going to be preparing. I know I have the recipe and I'll share, but give us a little intro about who Samara really is. Sure. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, everybody watching. So I'm Samara. From St. Vincent. I live here in Diana now, happy on Petty Four. And I said about myself. I studied uh, culinary arts at the Culinary Institute of America. I think we're well represented in this cooking demo series. I think there was at least one other alumni, so go CIA. Um, and I've been working here in Diana for the last 10 years trying to spread the joy of good food. And I'm excited today because my business is Christmas. And I was so happy when Jaree asked me to take part in the series because I thought, how can I combine everything that I love about an essential Christmas dish into like one thing? Um, and throw in some rum too which I think was a little bit of a curveball. And so I came up with this rum brine pork. Um, so I'm using pork. Pork in the Caribbean is like always associated with Christmas. Everybody always has a ham. Particularly in St. Vincent, I don't think there's anybody really that celebrates Christmas without pork or ham. And then I combined a couple flavors that I think are so integral to Caribbean Christmas. So I use a lot of spices that you would find in things like sorrel, and also brining it because um shout out to my aunt she often tries to brine a pork shoulder every year for christmas so i thought i'd use those concepts together and we ended up with rum brine pork um cooking is really easy for the people that are very culinary sa culinarily savvy and um also i think it's really tasty and hopefully it brings you the taste of safety and that that's my introducing 
Quatro vezes. Quatro vezes. So, is step up this? Are you going to Thank you. I'm hearing your, what is he? A, a, a male or female? Are you hearing me, Samara? Sorry, I did not hear you. You're breaking up. It's breaking up a little bit. Yeah, it's breaking up a little bit. Okay, we know we in the Caribbean, so we expect a few of those challenges. <laughs> Everybody who's in the US, we do have yeah. those challenges in the Caribbean, so bear with us. So, Sorry. Samara, let's have Stephanie do a bit of an introduction. Okay. Yeah, so All right. Well, thank you, Natalie, and thank you, everybody, for being here today. Um, I'm so excited to share with you um, some of the recipes and some things that I grew up with. Um, and that now I kind of put my own little twist on it. So originally I'm from Curacao, which is one of the Dutch islands in the Caribbean. Um, over the years, I met the love of my life there. He decided to move to St. Kitts. So I guess now we are living in St. Kitts and uh, I love it here. Um, it's become my second home. Um, and, you know, I embrace everything about St. Kitts and, you know, all the people and the culture and everyone uh, that I've met so far. Um, it's really beautiful experience so far for the last, how long have we been here? Eight years? Twelve years? I don't even know. It's a long time. <laughs> but we've been here quite a while. Um, so today I'm going to be sharing our black fruit cake. Now, typically, every family um, throughout the Caribbean islands have their own version of this cake. Um, I put a little twist on it. I'm using blue curacao as one of the uh, alcohol bases in the cake, as well as hibiscus spice rum, which is a locally produced rum of St. Kitts. And uh, to finish it off, I'm gonna add some cake wine. Um, because I like things a little sweet. Uh, so we adding these three things and I really feel like this combination really speaks to who I am um, and the flavors that um, have inspired me throughout the years. So yeah, <laughs> okay, wonderful. So thanks Stephanie, uh, thanks Amara. And um, so ladies have introduced themselves and I'm gonna leave us for last, so just for some of you who are new to the TAS uh, Cooking Festival, I am Natalie John. I am with Dreamy Weddings, CEO of Dreamy Weddings. We are a destination wedding planning company operating in 13 Caribbean destinations. But I'm also one of the wings beneath Kelly in TAS. And my other partner, who is the one who has spearheaded the cooking festival is actually Ms. Dereed Whitlock. And Dereed is originally from Antigua, who runs her own marketing and consultancy firm out of New Jersey. So throughout today, you may meet all of us. We may pop in to say um, a bit of a hello to, to everyone who's here. So I'd like to get right on in to what it is we'll actually be cooking and Samara, since Samara actually is doing the, the pork, um, we will start with her in terms of what exactly she's doing, because I know doing the brine, it has to be done overnight and, and so forth. So we can start off with that. And then once we go through, then we will move on to Stephanie, because Stephanie is doing, as we said, fruit cake, black cake, and then we will switch over ladies. Is that OK? Okay, so uh, Samara, if you could just tell us a little bit more 
about the preparation? Sure. So let me start by doing your pork brine. So if you step over here, um, we're using what I think are some really uh, classic Christmas ingredients. Um, and of course, the room that we're incorporating. Um, so over here, I have green seasoning. And if you're familiar with cooking in the Caribbean, you know that nobody cooks any meat without starting with some green seasoning. Um, if you don't right. have green seasoning, don't worry about it too much because the brine is so full of flavor that it's not going to be an issue. But since we're wrapping the Caribbean, I think it's important to start with some green seasoning. And then I have my two rounds here. Tamara, can you just tell us what's in your green seasoning? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah sure, sure. So this green seasoning I actually made myself, and it's mostly things I find in my own garden. So there is celery, um, onions, which are in my garden, but um, I hope I can get there soon. Um, there are peppers, thyme, broccoli, and finally thyme. I throw in some basil as well. And usually just any herb that I have that's going on. And then some salt and vinegar, and that's it. Okay. So I, I think everybody's green seasoning kind of differs because people tell me they don't add as many herbs as I do, but I usually just add whatever I have that I think makes a nice flavor. So that's what's going on here. And then for the runs, I am using XM 10 year old, which is a guy who's brown rum. You know, Guyana is really famous for brown rum. A lot of people know about El Dorado. XM is a little less well known but just as good on its age so it has a really strong barrel flavor it's very nice and then from st vincent we're using a classic it's sunset strong rum i would have i think i saw it in my last demo i love strong rum it's a very overproof white rum um i don't think it gets the respect respect it deserves for a white rum it's pretty tasty um i think it works wonders on this prime so we're using that today and then over here, I have a little plate with um, all the spices that we're gonna be using today. So we have a steak, some cloves, some black peppercorns, and ginger. And these ingredients, actually with the exception of the peppercorns, are usually what I would put in my style at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. So I thought that would be a really good addition to brighten that Christmas flavor. And over sugar that's and the hearts are really strong flavor it's pretty good and we have some salt um and then this is our pork so today i am using pork loin chops and i recommend for this brine using a fairly thick pork chop because you're going to leave it for a long time in the brine if you make it too thin mm -hmm. Um, you end up with much like the same background. So we're just gonna move over here to our bowl. Mm -hmm. And in our bowl, we're gonna add the water. That, that's and then that's we're gonna add so this is just water. Does it have any vinegar? Any vinegar in there? No, this is just water. Just water. And then to water, you're going to add sugar and salt. Okay. So, and we're going to give that a stir. So I really just want this to dissolve. So if you stir it a couple of times, it should be fine. And we're going to put that aside over here. Then, I'm gonna take my pork chops and I'm just gonna rub them with the green seasoning. I'm just gonna cover both sides. And I'm gonna leave them to sit in that while I prepare the rest of things for the broth. So, you remember I told you we had some peppercorns. So just before you use peppercorns, it's always a good idea just to crush them so you get out some of that flavor. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm doing all these. You don't have to put my knife. And then I'm going to add that to the Then you can take the ginger, sorry. 
and then just get a slice of that. And add that to the right. And right, I'm going to add cinnamon stick, and then close, and get a little stir so you make sure that all the sugar and salt really get resolved in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should all smell like Christmas already. I feel like it really does. And now, a good part, you're going to add the rum. So, we have that's a strong rum, and that's our grown rum. Are you using like maybe two tablespoons of rum, a tablespoon of uh, dark rum? And the nice thing about this brine and this recipe is you can totally play around with the quantities. So if you feel like you want a little bit more of a rum flavor, you can add more rum. Um, for people that don't like that much salt, you can cut back on the salt a little bit. In this case, I have three, uh, three tablespoons of salt and three tablespoons of brown sugar. But again, you can play around with that as much as you like. And after you make it the first time, you can kind of figure out what works best for you. So now I'm going to add a pork chops to brine. Mm -hmm. There you go. And this is the first part. It's done. So all we have to do now is cover this up. And I stick it in the fridge overnight. If you feel like you don't have that much time, I think four hours will do a really nice job of brining it for you. So you can basically cover it up and put it in the fridge. Okay. Um, so while we're finished with that, I thought um, it might be nice if we made all the sides to go with it, and they usually happen pretty fast, and I think we can put it together and hold it in a matter of seconds. So now let's go with this. Let me know what you prefer. Tamara, how long, how long should we keep it? How many hours? I know you said overnight, but is there a specific number of hours? So 12 hours overnight, and if not, as little as four hours would be fine. Okay. So you just want to get as much flavor in there as possible. Okay, wonderful. And um, so while we wait for for the the overnight production, which I'm sure you've already done, <laughs> you are going to prepare. You say you're going to prepare a side dish. Is it? Mm -hmm. And what would that be like? So to go with the pork, we're also doing a little sorrow reduction. Um, because I think that those flavors mesh really well. And if you remember, I told you all the spices that I use to brine the pork are actually things I would use to make my sorrow as a new drink. So here we kind of, I don't know, it's like a deconstructed Christmas meal in a way. So we're going to do a sorrow reduction and then a stuffing because I feel like there's always leftover stuffing from Christmas. Um, mm -hmm. And then vegetables. I'm doing some carrots and we're going to glaze them in passion fruit because it's a Caribbean and there's so many exciting flavors. I thought it would be nice to get as many of them as possible into one dish. Perfect, perfect. Thanks, Amara. I think that's awesome so far. And um, while you do your preparation for your sides, we will then head on over to the kitchen here to get Stephanie ready. Because I think so far you have the main course. Uh, Stephanie's going to be doing the dessert item, which is the black cake. And somewhere around there, I think I gave instructions for my drink. So we spoke about sunset, and I know sunset is not to be played with at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so certainly continue um prep and we will touch base with you shortly so thanks for that so we're now turning over to stephanie sure. great thanks amara so stephanie um let's go we start in our, our fruit cake. cake caribbean fruit cake yes so there's basically three main items that go into making any fruit cake. The first one is your liquor, your alcohol. You know, everywhere in the Caribbean, we love ourselves some rum, some liquor. Um, of course, a happy rum.
represent by Blue Curacao, uh, the iconic drink um, created and invented in Curacao. And for St. Kitts, we have our hibiscus spice rum, um, which just launched last year. So it's a brand new product um, and it's just amazing. It's a sorrel based um, rum. So the rum is actually red in color and it's beautifully seasoned with the different uh, local spices and whatnot that's available here. Um, so then we have our dried fruits, which is the second part. And this can be a combination of anything that we like. We have um, majority of the fruit cakes are based on prunes and then a little bit extra. So what's naturally showing now is tutti frutti, which are candied uh, cherries. And then we have candy orange peel. Uh, we have black currants. <laughs> and those go overboard. I can't be an assistant <laughs> in the kitchen. I know my place. And uh, next we have um, raisins, golden raisins, dates, and we have prunes. So now all these fruits, we are actually going to soak uh, for about a month or longer. Um, what that does is, is it, all the fruits will absorb all the alcohol, all the liquor, all that nice yummy flavor that's in there, and it's gonna soften the fruits. Now, I did learn a small little trick once I moved to Sinkis. One day um, I was in the kitchen and uh, this lady that was helping me out uh, at the time, uh, saw me making this fruit cake and she said, oh, why are you soaking your fruits for that long? You can just make it now. I said, what do you mean now? I've always thought so, that yes. you have to soak. We have to, we soak, have to soak our fruits. So the real purpose is to just soften the fruits and then everything gets um, absorbed, right? Um, so a little quick tip that she taught me, which saved me so much work, is you can put it on a low heat and just boil it for about 15 to 20 minutes mm. and just cover the pot um, with a lid so that nothing evaporates out. And everything that's so soft and so juicy, it's like you soaked it for like a month. <laughs> but you know so, what though? The, the tradition though, in tradition every Caribbean home, tradition, every Caribbean home by October, November, whoever bakes the fruit cake is asking about fruits and they want to soak it and you want to see it actually soaking in the bottle and you pass and then you add some additional rum to that and you add some additional fruit exactly and every now and again you open it and you smell it and you're like mm -hmm. yeah. so i think that the tradition here yeah, for those last minute people yeah that tip works excellent yes. But yeah, the traditionally, I love to soak my fruits. For me, that's the best. Like, and that's the smell that stays in your house. Mm -hmm. And it's just the smell of Christmas and the smell of the holidays. All right. Right. But if you are one of those last minute people rushing, 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 because I know it happens, you know, you can do the little quick tip. Um, so to boil it um, if you're really in a rush. So we're going to take our fruits that have been soaking. Um, these, these have been soaking for a month, so they're very nice and soft, right? And um, you can do a, var a variety of ways to grind these. You can either put them in a blender, just don't put everything all at once. Uh, you can put it in a food processor and just pulse it. Um, so you want the fruit to break down, but you don't want it all the way smooth. You want a little bit of a chunk in there um, because we do want a little bit of texture. So so you can know what, um, what fruits are in them. Now, my preferred method is to use one of these handheld blenders. You have home ones as well, which are a little bit smaller, <laughs> but you're just gonna put this in and just give it a pulse. So that dices the fruit. This dices the fruit. And it chops it up, and as you're working, you can see how much um, is being blended. So if you like it chunky, you leave it a little bit shorter. If you like it smoother, you add a little bit more. Very 
So a little bit noisy, <laughs> but I'm going to give it one last pause and then I think we should. <laughs> Okay, guys, um, I'm only drinking coffee. I'm not drinking any sunset rum, so I don't know how the, the raisins fell, but this is what it actually looks like. Woo, looks good, really good. And um, Samara, you could always bring your ingredients close up to so we could get a better, deeper look at your stuff. Because I'm not there. If I was there, I would help you in the kitchen. I can show you everything. <laughs> okay, so Steph, what's next? What do you do next? So next, we're going to make our cake base. Um, you could use something like a pound cake base. But we're gonna leave out any liquid like water um, because you know all the liquid, the rum and the raisins, they all have the flavor and the liquid you need to moisten the cake. And believe me, this is gonna be very, very moist. It is not gonna be a dry cake at all. So we're gonna throw in some sugar, we're using brown sugar, butter. And we're going to cream these first. While this is creaming, I'm going to start cracking some eggs. And don't worry, um, I know Samara as well as Stephanie shared their recipe. So we will actually be providing you with the recipe after. Uh, so you can try all of those at home. Don't wait until Christmas to try it. So you can try it next week. And um, if you have any questions after you've done it, um, feel free to share the photos with us. Uh, if you want to get in touch with the chef, uh, we will be able to provide the information as well. I'll also share the social media handles. So Kelly will put that in the chat so you can actually follow the chef on social media. So while Steph, okay, so Steph will just give us a little more before we move back to Samar. Okay, so we creamed our butter and sugar together. Now we're just gonna add our eggs. And after that, we're gonna add our flour, which we're gonna season with salt, cinnamon, um, nutmeg, and ginger. You said salt, um, you put salt? Yes, yeah, so what the salt actually does is it balances out all the flavors so that your cake is not overly sweet. So the salt is very important um, for a good balance in your cakes. And even with other cakes, you always add a little pinch of salt, makes a world of a difference. Ooh. Fun, fun fact, I did not know that. I've never added salt. Oh, I see some sorrel over there, Samara. Tell us a little more about what you're doing over there. Okay, I think you are mute. Okay, so, go ahead. So I'm making a, the sorrel reduction right now. So basically all I've done is pour some hot water into some sorrel and I'm gonna just leave it for a little bit. And then later we're gonna add sugar to it. We're gonna put it in a pot and allow it to reduce so we get like a nice thick syrup going. And I've also started doing my um, stuffing in this pan over here. So I'm just adding a mirepoix to some oil. And a mirepoix, sorry, is this um, onion, Carrots and some celery. I'm just gonna be the base of my uh, stuffing. And then to this, I'm gonna add some. Bread and um, 
know, stuffing works really well with stale bread. So if you have bread that's like a day or two old, you can cut it up and use it. And I've just seasoned it bread with some salt um, and some dried herbs, basil, tarragon, and an herb de Provence. And we have some marrow because I am gluten intolerant. And we have something that we call farine, which is cassava. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so this bread and doing this there? This, that works perfectly. And actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's actually something my family does pretty often. So after you add the mirepoix, you can ideally just throw some farine in there, season it with salt, and add a little water, and it will come just as well for perfect stuffing. And you're right, it's gluten-free, so for anybody with like celiacs, it's like a great alternative to stuffing. Perfect, perfect. Because I just decided to just try it out and, and it works. So I'm, I'm happy that you could actually do it for stuffing as well. But that looks really good yep. though. And that you put um, any oil in there? So there was a little oil in hand before. You can use olive or really any oil that you want to. Um, so it's really simple ingredients. There's some oil. And then I put onions, carrots, celery. I put some cut up bread and I season the bread with salt and pepper and some dried herbs. And then I add some water to the end and that's it. You basically have a really easy finished stuffing. So we're gonna oh, have to this. That's awesome. And then we can move on to our sorrow. The sorry looks good. Yes. And so I don't know if you noticed, but this is something. The sorrow, I'm making a reduction. Okay. I was just about to say, I don't know if you noticed, but in Guyana, this sorrow is super dark. It was kind of surprising to me. It's a mint that our sorrow tends to be a lighter shade of red. And in Guyana, it has this really dark, deep color, which actually turns out really nice cooking with it. So that's fun. Wow. You have to see it coming through. So, yeah, exactly, right? So sometimes, like most of the time, I would also leave this for a couple hours. Um, but you know, it, it will work in like a couple minutes as well. It just depends on how you strong you want this style taste to be. So I'm gonna add this now I'm gonna strain it into a pot there. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, you can see that red. And for those of you who are yeah. alive, I just want you to know that coral is a, is a fruit. Um, I think it's a fruit um, that we have. It's mostly grown, or we get it in blossom or bloom during the uh, October, November months. And we all make this drink called sorrel um, juice, or we make sorrel rum. Um, and it's a must have at Christmas time in any Caribbean household as well. So just for those of you who are not familiar with sorrel, I just wanted to just add that so that you are aware. Sure, so sorrel is actually a flower and it's, it's fairly popular in uh, Central America. I think I refer to it as Jamaica. And it's also used in a lot of uh, herbal teas as well. Um, so it's popular. I think the rest of the world just doesn't know it as sorrel, but we call it sorrel. So there you go. To the sorrel and the water, I'm just adding half a cup of sugar. And basically the next step is just to leave this to reduce. So it becomes kind of thick and it can coat the back of your spoon. Um, mm -hmm. And that takes care of that. So lots of the things that we're doing today are really easy. Um, they don't take a lot of time or a lot of culinary know-how. Um, so everybody should be able to throw them together for that cheese from the islands. Okay, all right. And how is, how is that pork doing? So the pork is great. It's, um, look, we'll take a look at it now. So <laughs> this is what it looks like. Um, okay. We can actually get started on doing it because 
Can you start cooking it? Yeah. Yeah, so, 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 so then we could then sure. move on to so, 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 Stephanie. Well, you want to do is take it out of the brine, and then I've just arranged some paper towels here, and you want to place it on the paper towels, and then you want to kind of dry it off a bit. So you don't want it too much excess liquid there. And then I'm just going to put it over here. And our next step is just adding a little oil. And you want to rub both sides of it. So your pork isn't going to look much different from the front of the brine. Um, it, it'll look virtually the same. It might have... Sorry? Is it vegetable oil or coconut oil? So I'm using vegetable oil. I wouldn't recommend coconut oil for this just because it doesn't have as high a, a, a burning point. And um, things are going to get smoky on the grill. So you need something that can take a little bit more heat. So this is vegetable. Okay, um, you could also use olive oil if you wanted to. But in this case, I feel like olive oil is not really with that uh, Caribbean flavor palette that we're looking for. So just vegetable oil because it doesn't have that much flavor going on in it. Okay, wonderful. And right. then we have the grill. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take you over to my board. So one of the things that's really popular in St. Vincent is is uh what we call rose pork, which is really like an outdoor grilled pork. And I feel like it's one of those little known like culinary things in St. Vincent that visitors don't necessarily know about. Um, but Vincentians love it, and you always get grilled pork on the roadside when you go out in St. Vincent, especially lying at Christmas time. Um, so I thought an element of this should be something that's kind of, you know, grilled, which is why we're going to grill the pork. Of course, we can't grill outdoors, so we're here with my trusty grill pan. Um, and what's important here, and I think this is the most important thing when making this, is that you make sure that your grill pan gets really hot. Okay, so you want to make sure your fire is turned all the way up. Um, and a good measure of that is just by holding your hand over the top and seeing how hot it is. So right now it's not very hot. Um, and just wait until it gets that heat and it starts to smoke a little bit. So we're just going to wait till we get to that point. And then we're going to put on our, our meat. In the meantime, you can see our saw up here is starting to really bubble and reduce a little bit. It's mm -hmm. coming along. I mean, what is this nice color, right? Right. It has a nice color of bridge. Okay. Um, so we're going to add the pork. So we're just waiting for the pan to get a little bit hotter. Okay. In the meantime, we can finish up the, um, our stuffing. Um, to finish the stuffing, I'd like to throw in some raisins, craisins. And also, I've added some chives here for some color because that's festive. And you want to just put those in after the sun. It's not super important that those cook. You don't want the chives to cook out too much in this there. So that's what you're looking for. Okay. Okay, great. So while we wait for the pork, to get into the pan, I'm gonna go back to Stephanie so we can just see a little more in terms of the cake that she's actually doing. So, um, great. So Steph, you added the yeah. the eggs. Ooh, look at that color. So I want to show you guys up close. Um, you realize Stephanie is not trusting me anymore. <laughs> So we have our cake batter here. So I did add some, some vanilla essence to it and also um, a very, very um, unusual ingredient I find um, because I never added this in my cakes before until I came to St. Kitts, which is a uh, gravy brownie. Oh, really? yes. oh no, we add gravy brownie. I never knew. Yeah, I never knew this before. So when I moved here, I learned that um, we 
use gravy browning. It's usually used for making sauces and obviously gravies. That's what uh, it's meant to be for. Mm -hmm. um, but it gives it that little extra richness to it. Um, to make it a little touch darker, darker. Mm -hmm. So here we have our fruits that we blended and soaked, and we're gonna add that to our cake batter. Ooh, that looks so good. Oh my God, I wish you could smell this. It's so amazing. Yeah, it, it is. And for those of you who probably say, "Ooh, I don't like raisins or I don't like prunes," like me, I don't like eating fruit cake with the actual fruits in it because I get mixed peel and, and what's it tutti frutti? tutti frutti I don't like that at all the cherries but what I actually do love I love fruit cake but it has to be minced so that's another way of having uh, the traditional fruit cake you can ask that all the fruits be minced so you don't actually feel the texture of the the yeah. other fruits that you may not like yeah if you don't like it as chunky you can blend it down even further um, so that it's smoother. So some people like it very smooth, others like it a little bit chunky. So for me, I like to be right in the middle. Like I don't really want to have like big chunks of fruit, but I want a little bit of texture in there. Right? Perfect. So we're gonna um, mix this together and then we're gonna put it in our pan. Um, I've already prepared a pan here which I lined with a little piece of parchment paper, which I just cut to the shape of the pan. You don't need to add butter, you don't need to add greasing or anything. As long as you have this paper at the bottom, you should be fine, right? Oh. Because this is what's going to prevent it from sticking to the bottom of the pan. Of the pan. Okay. And when you take it out, you just run your knife along the edge that will loosen it and then flip it out. Yeah. Just comes out. Perfect. Right? So we have our batter here, which is ready. And we're going to pour this into the pan. Now, um, the recipe which I gave you is actually double of this here. But you can always, you know, make less if you want to. Just divide all your ingredients equally. And you should be good. So we're going to add everything. Give it a little mix. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh, look at the texture. Well, when you see it, it doesn't look the best. Yeah, it doesn't look the best. <laughs> <laughs> it does not look appetizing. <laughs> but, it's, but it smells really, really good. And trust me, it tastes awesome. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it does not look and like anything you want to eat. But believe me. <laughs> It is good. <laughs> it's really, really good. Yeah. So as um this portion would be our plating portion, but um as you know, it took definitely just a couple of minutes. Once you have all your ingredients ready, it's really easy to make the traditional Caribbean uh fruit cake. So as we prepare to get it into the oven, at what temperature would we put it, Steph? We're going to put it at 300 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. And before we put it in, I'm going to take another pan, which is the size bigger, and I'm going to fill it with some water. This is called a bain marie. Um, basically, mm -hmm. and we're going to put this uh, cake inside of that. You want the water to come about halfway up the pan. This is going to prevent your cake from burning on the outside edges. So Ooh. it cooks evenly throughout. Um, and it does take a long time to cook. Sometimes, depending on your pan, mm -hmm. about an hour and a half to two hours, right? So you don't want those edges to burn. So as you're cooking, just keep an eye on the water level. Make sure that um, you know the water doesn't evaporate fully. Mm -hmm. And if you see it's running too low, just add a little bit more. Okay, awesome. I didn't know that fact. Um, that you need to what is it called? Ban Marie. Ban Marie. Okay. Yeah, very fancy. Yeah. <laughs> so is, is this something that was tra traditional in Curacao? This is traditionally done in Curacao. So oh. I've always done it like this. And I don't know if that's a family secret. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm letting something out. <laughs> but um, yeah, we always bake it like this, and it keeps your size nice and moist, so it doesn't burn. Okay, all right. I'm gonna try that. Kelly and Jerry, we 
be trying something new because I think we don't do that. We just put it, put it in the pan, stick it in the oven, and then you set it, was it? Set it and forget it. I think that's about <laughs> it. Yeah. And uh, at what stage, uh, Steph, do you just check it? Because I know in the yeah. Caribbean, we have these little, like, uh, stewer sticks. The stewer stick. And you go and you prick it, and if it comes back up and it's sticky. Yeah. So that's the same method I use. You want to make sure that if you give the pan a little push, it doesn't jiggle. Okay. And uh, once you reach that stage, you want to start inserting the, the little toothpick mm -hmm. and you want to see that it comes up clean. Now with this particular cake, um, it is very moist and very sticky. So you are going to get some residue, but you don't want it to be like a raw batter. You want it to be um, fully cooked and just a little bit of of a touch of like you know the color on your toothpick but you don't want it to be anything raw in there <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right well the wrong one picks everything up so while Steph actually puts the cake now into the oven by the time we come back to Steph we will have our cake fully baked and then I will be having some I think I made an order for some pumpkin pasta creme so I'll be having that with my cake this time I started off with my latte and my cookie. Stephanie has a pastry shop in the front, so I started off with a cookie, really good. Um, so let's go on to Samara. Steph, thank you so All much. Right. We'll be back with you shortly. Yes, sure. So Samara, tell us what you're doing there with the pork. I see it on the grill. Hi, Samara, are you hearing me? Okay, guys, um, once Samara comes back, um, so the pork is actually on the grill. So I saw Samara has actually come out. So probably she's just lost some um, connection. So, so I'll probably keep you entertained. Uh, Stephanie, um, probably you can come back. Samara, we've lost Samara a bit, and um, I will actually talk a little about St. Kitts. So we actually in, uh, in St. Kitts um, and Nevis, so for those of you who probably have heard of either you say Nevis, Nevis, um, Nevis, Nevis, uh, it's actually St. Kitts and Nevis, it's, um, we call it our Twin Island Federation. And um, we are in the bigger island, which is St. Kitts, and then you have the small island, which is Nevis, but two beautiful islands nonetheless. And so for the travel advisors who are actually on, uh, it's certainly a beautiful location to send your clients. I normally try to sell it as two for one. So you have, uh, you buy one ticket, but you could actually visit two islands for the price of, of one. And um, Stephanie's studio is actually located in Frigate Bay. And so right across the street from me is the Royal um, St. Kitts in one uh, location. So to the right of us, the Royal St. Kitts Hotel. And to the left of us is the St. Kitts Marriott Resort. And I'm actually holding the high school. Are you back? I'm hearing shortly. Um, so as I was saying, the hibiscus spice rum. I am not a rum drinker. So I'm really the wrong side up. Too much sideways. We have a really good thing. So hibiscus. Oh, you like the orientation didn't set. Certainly, when you're next trip to think it. I'm trying to turn off. I'm sure it's one of the best by a gin drinker. I, I don't know, I'm just telling you what I heard. So we're now back with Samara. So Samara, oh, Samara has gone again. And guys, that's just our normal internet challenges in the Caribbean, but that's okay because I know in the US you do have those challenges as well. Lots of time I'm on the phone with either Kelly or my sister Grace and I just say, oh, it has to be your guys' internet. So back to telling you a little bit about rum because in the caribbean um as you know we always say in the caribbean after jamaica no problem man no problem everything is always you know hunky dory very beautiful in the caribbean 
And so in the Caribbean, once we have our rum, we good. So we very good uh, today. So I'm going to use this time so that Stephanie could actually showcase our cake. And so we could actually plate our fruitcake while Steph um, cleans up a little bit. Because again, when you do fruitcake, it can be a little messy. But one of the good things I'll tell you, and Steph, please bring that batter bowl. So as a kid, one of the things that you do, and I'm gonna do it today, is you say to your mother, please, please, can you leave a little bit of the batter? And you take that batter, and you lick, you do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good, Steph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll share a little secret, a Caribbean secret with you that that's one of the ways you taste to know that the cake is gonna be really good. So on that note, and I you taste the rum. So, so Samara, are you ready for us? I think Samara is almost ready. I see the sorrel bob bubbling up. Sorry, sorry, we just got cut off completely. Sorry, but we're here, we're ready. So everything about was done. We missed an important part, which was the pork being cooked. Um, to get really nice grill marks like this, the trick is really just to have a really nice you do a complete to get the second set so it's a cross hatch like that. Mm -hmm. I recommend about six minutes for each side. Um, if you're using really nice pork that you trust, you can do it up to medium well and that's good. If you want to cook it a little longer, you can always take it off of the grill and pop it into the oven. But we're going to go with this right now because it looks great and if you touch it, it's nice and firm so we know it's ready to go. So if we come over here, we're gonna get started in planting everything. Okay, wonderful. So we're starting to plate. Mm -hmm. So here, this is what your saw reduction should look like when you're done. You notice how thick that is, and what a great color it has. And I'm just using a regular pastry brush here. You can use a brush with bristles, but I'm using a plastic pastry brush. And then I like to make a little swish. My my mother's an artist. I hope I'm making her proud in my brush strokes here. She's gonna <laughs> paint. This is about the only thing I could possibly paint. So this is a far reduction, and I think it has such a great color. Looks awesome. And then the next thing we're gonna get on the plate is our stuffing. And it's okay if it goes a little bit away. And let me turn it around to you so you get the nice presentation side. Okay, here we go. And then we're gonna put our fork down on it, like so. And then I'm gonna add, so while, while we were gone, um, I was making some carrots. So I just blanched these carrots in some water and then off they don't want to be here. And then I cook them in some passion fruit juice with a little sugar and I reduce that and also some butter and I reduced it. And we have it all. And then from my garden, I have um, some edible flowers because those are always handy to make a nice plate. And I'm just using some sprinkle mint as well. Um, a couple of sprinkles of baseballs. And there we have it. I think this is my um Vincent and Christmas in a plate. I'm gonna add some um some of this passion for reduction to the plate there. So I I have to say I think this plate is my ode to Vincent and Christmas. I think it encompasses everything that I love about St. Vincent Christmas food, all the spices, the rum, the flavors, 
just sorrow, um, passion, fruit, um, leftover Christmas stuffing. Um, yeah, there it is. I hope everybody gives it a try and enjoy it. Um, if you do, please let me know. Oh, it, looks, it looks really, really good. Um, a pity I'm not there to, to savor it with, with you. Um, I love the way that you actually plated it. Um, the stuffing looked really good. Um, I know we got cut off, but we actually got to see it on the grill and we got to see the carrots being blanched. And um, so really, really, I think it was a good experience. At least it was a good experience for me. I'm sure the uh, persons who are viewing actually enjoyed watching. Uh, the elderflower is a nice little touch in terms of adding to the overall presentation. And guys, I just want you to know that if you are visiting Diana or you have friends visiting Diana, uh, Samara has a cafe called Le Petit Four and it's based in Georgetown in Diana. So be sure to check her out when you go to Diana or you have uh, clients going there. And um, her IG is Samara underscore Murphy. So do follow her and her cafe is 34 underscore Georgetown. So we'll add that to the chat and we'll certainly share it um, with you. But before we go to Stephanie, um, Samara, I mean, you know, you said that your most favorite time of the year uh, was Christmas. Could you just share um, the differences between a Guyanese Christmas and a St. Vincent Christmas? Or is there any difference at all? Sure, I, I think me talking about a Guyanese Christmas versus a Vincentian Christmas might have me end up in divorce because I am so biased. I think Vincentian Christmas is way better and my husband thinks of course Guyanese Christmas is awesome. But um, a couple of things that I really love about St. Vincent is we have a unique festival called Nine Mornings uh, where we celebrate from nine mornings before Christmas. And I think the best way to explain what night mornings is, is to describe it for Caribbean people as a jury, juve. Um, so if you're from the Caribbean and you know what juve is, you know, we get up early in the morning and we go to a party during carnival. And night mornings is exactly that. We get up super early before the sun is up and we all go to town and in the town, um, in an area that's kind of known as um, Heritage Square. We have beer drinking competitions, caroling, Quran. Um, basically, people just need to, to hang out and to line together. And we do that all before we go to work. <laughs> um, so that's one of the unique traditions that we enjoy in Sydney. And of course, just being with friends and families always. We love our food. I think that I've tried to put some of it into this dish. Um, but I mean, Guyana also has great traditions as well. Um, my husband says it's not a Christmas in Guyana without garlic pork. Um, so that also actually comes to think of it really similar. It's a pork um, that's pickled as opposed to brine. And that's wildly popular here. Um, it shocks me because when you say garlic pork, you think of something salty, but it's actually really acidic. They, they are pickle it in vinegar and garlic. Um, but that is a big tradition here as well. Um, and of course, pepper pot as well, um, which is from the Amerindian culture in Guyana. And it's cassari, which is derived from the cassava root. Um, and they basically cook the green meat you can find in that. And they simmer it for days and keep adding things. Um, that's really popular and interesting taste. I think it's a little bit of an acquired taste. <laughs> um, but I unique part of Guyanese tradition. So I think they both have, you know, nice things about them, but I have to say I reach the St. Vincent also because our weather is so much better at Christmas time. It rains here all the time. <laughs> I know, uh, as my mom would say, Samara, you have to be thankful for the rain. You know, it allows things to grow. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true, it's true. Pleasure uh, cooking with you um, today, and uh, we will turn over to Stephanie.
I'll come back to you just for some closing words, as well as if there are any questions at all. Um, but uh, thanks for that amazing dish. And as I said, oh, I see a dog so cute. <laughs> yeah, <she's fine. laughs> there's our camera lady felt it important to share with me. <laughs> he was talking earlier because he wanted to be part of the presentation. Yeah, I, I think he's in, enjoying the smell of pork right now. <laughs> I think so. I think so. So we're going to just go on to Stephanie, who's about to play her fruitcake. So we'll be back shortly. So come on, Stephanie. That's what we're doing right now. Thanks. So right here I have a piece of marzipan. This is called a golden marzipan, but you can certainly use white as well. And we're going to just cover our cake with the marzipan. That gives it that little extra layer. Um, if you're gonna keep your cake for long, it will um, insulate the cake and protect it from any um, drying out. Although there's a lot of rum in there, you don't have to worry so much, but it's just a little extra protection. So I'm gonna show you a little trick um, to get the marzipan on the cake. So you're gonna take a piece of parchment paper with some icing sugar on top, and just roll it out. If you find it difficult um, to roll, you can even put a second piece of parchment paper on top of your marzipan. So it's gonna be like a sandwich. And you're just gonna roll out your marzipan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once you have it nice and thin, we're gonna cover it on the cake. Now to make it stick a little bit better on the cake, I'm gonna do a little splash of rum. Of rum. I told you everything in the Caribbean, rum. And then we're gonna brush it all over the cake with a clean pastry brush <clears throat> so that the cake is nice and sticky. And of course, the more the merrier, right? <laughs> and one thing Stephanie didn't say, in the Caribbean, we hardly put marzipan. Why? Because the cake does not last that long. The cake it does, does not last. last. As soon as you get the cake out of the oven, um, can I have a piece? Can I sample? And then before you know it, you probably either bake in another cake or most persons don't just bake one cake. You probably make two or three cakes for Christmas because one for the house, another one for people coming over and a second one for whichever one gets done uh, first. So um, back to Steph on the marzipan. So, you know, you can make it a little bit prettier. Mm -hmm. Now the marzipan is gonna stick to your parchment paper or wax paper and you're just gonna press it down onto your cake. You can remove the parchment and just wipe down all that sugar and press it into your cake, right? You can decorate it nicely. If you want to color it with Christmas colors, you can. I'm just going to cut. Steph is, doing, Steph is now doing the, profes the professional aspect. <laughs> That's yeah. not done in the household. No decorating on Christmas black cake. <laughs> but you know what? You do decorate it for weddings. Yes, you should so, a little bit of a covering. Correct. So for Caribbean weddings, black cake is another tradition as well. Yeah. So this is pretty much our cake covered. And as I said, you can decorate it however you want to. Uh, we're going to slice it up so we can have a bite. Now, normally, right, we get a very small piece of the cake because it's so precious and it, as Natalie said, doesn't last long at all. So you get a very small cake, but I'm going to be a little generous here, right? And I'm going to give you a nice slice. Woo! Oh, awesome. So guys, as I told you, um, ooh, thank you. Can I get the wrong step? Yes. So, I saw this recipe online and I thought to honor both Samara and Stephanie, 
who are part of the Caribbean, but they what we call way down under. Um, Trinidad, I saw a recipe called pumpkin posh de creme, which I tried at home, and I used the Mar Demerara rum, and it knocked me out. So today I'm going to try a little bit of spice rum, and I'm going to put a little bit for myself, and a little bit for Steph. Oh, thank you. And this is our version of, and um, I'm going to mix the rum up a bit in there. And this is going to be our finale drink for, because it's that time of the show. All good things must come to an end. And um, Samara, why are you going to have your lovely pork that I wish I had? I'm going to use my mind to think that I've just had a bite of that pork. And Steph and myself, so we plated our cake. And I'm going to take a bite with my pumpkin, so really this is like pumpkin with milk, um, evaporated milk, um, condensed milk, spices, um, essence, all blended up together. And of course, you top it with rum, blend that together, and I'm going to do a first taste. Wow. <laughs> Very good. Mm. Cheers. What I'm gonna try the cake. What happened to the videographer? <laughs> the videographer is asking what happened to him. I was there to hire pumpkin punch a crab. Despite sorrow. Yeah, Samara, so I'm loving your cocktail right now. I'm loving it. I, I'm just having spiked sorrel, sorrel and rum with a little cinnamon stain. I wish I could try some of your pumpkin punch the crab. Cheers! I'll share that recipe. I'll certainly share the recipe. Yeah, it and so it. I will. And for those of you who are watching, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us um, again. So you could get a sense of the, the black cake. Um, it tastes really good, guys. And for those of you who want to follow um, Stephanie on, on social media as well, uh, Stephanie is Sweet and Savory on uh, Instagram. It is actually Sweet Savory SK. And that is Savory with S-A-V-O-R-Y-S-K. And I see the lady of the hour has appeared. <laughs> I've been here. I've been here. The only thing I can't do is smell the food. But oh my goodness, what a spread. Okay. Tomorrow, okay. that looks so amazing. Oh my God, look at the sear on that, um, you know, on that pork. It is amazing. And it of is. course... Uh, Stephanie, next time I come to St. Kitts, I'm coming, taking a beeline straight to your place. What <laughs> an amazing, <laughs> what an amazing kitchen. But of course, you know, the creations are, are simply amazing. So, and, and Natalie, you did an amazing job. Thank you, Doreen. You, you brought everything to life. I could feel it. I could, I, you know, I had to rely on the other senses, but you did an amazing job. And I just want to remind our guests. First of all, thank you for tuning in for another episode. Um, 12 days of Caribbean cooking. Life doesn't get better. And tomorrow, the virtual tour makes a stop in Grenada. We have two Grenadian chefs. We are going to go to the Spice Isle of the Caribbean, and, and they have a lot in store for you. So same time tomorrow, tune in at five Eastern Standard Time, if you're in the Caribbean, most islands at six o'clock. So ladies, 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 this was amazing. Samara, my girl, you did an amazing job. Stephanie, you did an amazing job. We had, we had dinner, we had dessert, we had drinks. 
Natalie, does life get any better? No, Jerry, no, Jerry. <laughs> US right now. Come on, come on. We have space in the islands. Whether you go to Grenada, Antigua, St. Vincent, St. Kitts, or Nevis, come on down. Spend Christmas with us. Yes. And, you know, we had to make it big. These days, with everyone so bogged down, we're all zoomed out. When we conceptualized this, our vision was go big or go home. And we're not ready to go home. No. So we had to make it big. So just for everyone who is not as familiar with this cooking series, we have 31 chefs, as in three one chefs from 21 Caribbean destinations. So it doesn't get bigger and better than that. So we want to thank all our chefs. We want to thank all of the organizers, all of the, a lot of these chefs came from chefs referring chefs. And that's when you know you're getting a good chef because when your peers are recommending you and I have chefs from one island saying to me, how come my colleague from another island was not contacted? It tells you that you know chefs are a very close knit group. They look out for each other and um, you know they, they are committed to promoting the Caribbean. And I don't know, I don't care where you're located. Once you are a Caribbean chef, you know, our, um, dishes are essentially history and culture on a plate. So once you're preparing Caribbean food, you know what? You're promoting some island somewhere. You're a culinary ambassador because you have to go out and share with the guests what the um, background is and the backstory, et cetera. So until tomorrow, we're gonna sign out. Where's Kelly? I guess Kelly's taking a break, but on behalf of Kelly, who deserves a break, <laughs> we wanna say, have a nice evening and we'll see you in Grenada. Pack your bags. We'll see you in Grenada tomorrow where we will uh, take in the spices of uh, Grenada. So thanks for joining us. Cheers. I, have my, I finished my drink. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Bye, everyone. Okay, thank you. Bye. I want to take a picture. <laughs>